This video looks at the control of a heat exchanger. Now just a reminder of what these videos are about. Essentially we're demonstrating a simple technique for undertaking problem solving. Now problems often have open-ended or not single correct solutions. So how do you go about it? We've suggested you take a simple technique such as first ask what is the topic and write down what you should know about the topic. Secondly, look at the information you've been given and see how this information links to what you know already. And you may find a combination of one and two gives you new information and so you come up with some form of iteration and gradually it will be self-evident how you move towards either a solution or a proposal. And a reminder, of course, that problem solving is a very important skill that employers value. So let's look at this heat exchanger. What we want to do is design a control law to make sure this heat exchanger operates as desired. Now, this particular heat exchanger uses the latent heat of condensing steam to heat up a process flow. You'll see we've got a flow coming in here that's cold at one end, and it goes out at the other end as hot. And this cycle here is supposed to represent the steam coming in condensing. And the heat that you get from condensing steam heats up the flow. Now, what is it we want to do? We want to specify a control law and, if appropriate, a change in the design of this heat exchanger so that the heat exchanger meets some specific requirements. Now, what are the requirements? Our requirement is that the process flow reaches within 2% of a target temperature lift, so that means between the input cold and the output hot, um, and the lift we want is up to 20 degrees, and we want to achieve that within 40 seconds. So that's the requirement for this heat exchanger. Now some data we're given is the volume of the heat exchanger, so that in essence is how much liquid can you store inside here is 5 meters cubed. The flow rate of water through the heat exchanger, so here's the flow rate coming in and going out there, is 0 0.1 meters cubed per second. The latent heat of steam, lambda, 2.3 times 10 to the 6 joules per kilogram. The density of water, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Specific heat of water, 4,200 joules per degree. And critically, a maximum steam flow of 5 kilograms per second. So we've been given core data, and we've been given a requirement. And so this question is, how do I meet this requirement? So let's start then with asking questions like, what do I know? Well, the model for a simple heat exchanger is in the videos on first order modeling. So if you want to go through this slowly, I suggest you go and look at those videos. In essence, the power in, which comes from the condensing steam, plus the energy per second of the input flow is going to give you the rate of change of energy stored inside the heat exchanger, plus the energy per second of the output flow. So there's your energy or power balance. Now if you look at this, you'll see the energy in comes from condensing steam. So it's lambda times Q, where Q is the flow rate of the steam. The energy flow in the input stream is the density times the flow rate times Cp times the temperature of the input flow rate. The rate of change of energy stored in the tank is rho V Cp dt dt. And the energy flow in the output stream is rho F Cp times T. Now, if we put in all the numbers we were given at the outset, and I'm not going to do this slowly, you can see that you end up with this equation here. Now, if I simplify that out, it comes out to something like this, and simplify it again, and this is the model that we end up with. So the temperature of the output flow is 1 over S plus 0 0.02 times 0 0.02 Ti, that's the temperature of the input flow, plus 0 0.11 times Q, where Q is the steam flow. Now, we're considering changes. So we're saying we want a change in the output temperature, T. And normally, what people do is they say, all right, if we're talking about changes, we're going to assume that we're starting at a steady state. And therefore, in process engineering, it's quite common, and in fact convenient, to use 
deviation variables. And thus, what we're going to do is ignore for now ti. We'll assume that ti is constant. Now, if you do that, you can actually reduce your model to this sort of form here, which implicitly we're assuming is in deviation variable form. And you can always prove this using superposition, but that's not part of the purpose of this video. Now, what else do I know? Well, we want to design a feedback law, for example, M of S, in order to control the temperature. Now, for a simple chemical process such as this, PI control would be relatively normal. Also, we know that if you have a simple first order model or system, then the heuristic design rules for PI are fairly effective at identifying the correct values without any fine tuning. And here are the heuristic rules. Basically, if we call the PI controller KP plus KI over S, then we find a KP of 1 over G of 0 plus a KI of 1 over G of 0 ST is pretty much what you want, and that will give you reasonable performance. Now, there is a bit of a caveat here. You'll see we've put at the bottom these rules work well if the target time constant, that's this T here, the target time constant in your controller, is not too far from the open loop time constant. Now, what else have I been given? Some other information. We've been told that the notional flow rate of steam is limited to 5 kilograms per second. We've been told that the time constant we would like for this process is 10 seconds. And what we actually were told was we wanted to settle to within 2% in about four time constants. So we were told 40 seconds is how long you're allowed to get to within 2%. That means four time constants, and therefore the actual time constant you want is about 10 seconds. We've derived the open loop model. There it is, 0.11 over S plus 0.02. That's between steam flow and temperature change. And from this, we can see that the open loop time constant is 50 seconds. That's because 50 is the inverse of 0 0.02. Now, what I'm going to do first is design a heuristic PI with a target time constant of 50 seconds, because the heuristic rules basically say these work well if you design them for a time constant close to the open loop time constant. And if we do that, this is what the heuristic rule will give you. 1 over g of 0 is 0 0.02 over 0 0.11, and then you're going to get 1 plus 0 0.02 over s. So what I'll do next is I will try out this heuristic rule and see what happens. And here we go. You'll see that because we've tried to make the closed loop time constant the same as the open loop time constant, and this is a first order system, the closed loop input is essentially flat. It's a step, which is what we expect. The open loop time constant was 50 seconds, and therefore the settling time is going to be in the range of 150 to 200 seconds, and that indeed is what we see up here. So the open loop time constant has been achieved, but what we actually asked for in our requirements was that we would settle in 40 seconds, and you can see we're nowhere near to settling in 40 seconds. So the heuristic design going for open loop works well, gives you nice smooth behavior, delivers what you want, but it doesn't achieve the required time constant. OK, so what if we increase the gain of our PI by five times? Because essentially, we're saying we want a five times speed up from a time constant of 50 to a time constant of 10. Well, that's what we've done here. And what you can see is if I mark 40 seconds, which was our desired settling time to within 40%, we've achieved it. You can design a PI which will give you the required time constant. That's good. However, where's the downside? If you look over here at the steam flows which the PI is requiring, you'll notice that in order to get a 20 degree uplift in temperature, the initial steam flow is getting pretty close to 20 kilograms per second. However, we were told that you can't have more than 5 kilograms per second. 
So in other words, the PI compensator is demanding much more steam than you can actually deliver. So what does this tell us? If we look at the open loop system and the requirements, we see that incompatible. Okay? The open loop time constant is 50 seconds, and therefore, if we want a closed loop time constant of 10 seconds, the only way we can achieve this is with an overactive input. And at the moment, that's far beyond the available steam supply, unless you're just asking for very small temperature changes. Okay, so you have a choice. Either change the time constant requirement and accept that this heat exchanger has to have a slower time constant, or you have to upgrade your system in order to allow more steam flow. So the conclusions. This video has applied a simple problem-solving procedure to a scenario based on a heat exchanger, and we've demonstrated that a systematic approach makes the problem-solving straightforward, even where the required solution is somewhat open-ended. And in this particular case, the student can demonstrate that the requirement specified is unrealistic for the given design and constraints, and therefore they can make a proposal for, well, what should you do next?